here are two understandings of absolute value. On the right side, we have an algebraic understanding of absolute value. And I'm going to do that one first because this is how I work it out in the packet, in the summer review packet. This question should look familiar, maybe. If we have the absolute value of 16 minus 4x is equal to 3x minus 12, and oops, no, sorry, summer packet says let's say 3x it says 4x sorry so we have absolute value of 16 minus 4x is equal to 4x minus 12 um, we're told there's two cases when we have absolute value of something that thing right there this this thing in the parentheses can either be positive this or negative this, right? There's two cases when we have something in, in absolute value, and then we have to check. We have to be sure to check both cases, but let's let's um, let's do the positive one first. So here's uh, 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 here's the positive case first. 16 minus 4x is equal to a positive 4x minus 12. And I'm going to write an or down here. Or we have the negative case where 16 minus 4x is equal to minus 4x minus 12. Okay, so let's go, let's, let's, let's do this one first, the top one. If we add 4x to both sides, and in the, at the same time we add 12 to both sides, and you'll see why I did that. It's because these 12s cancel. Boom, boom. And over here, we're left with equals 8x. And on the left-hand side, these 4s will cancel. Boom, boom. And we have 16 plus 12 is equal to 28. Or x equals, oh, dividing both, or dividing every, both sides by 8, we get 28 eighths. And we can simplify that x equals uh, they have the common factor of 4, 7, so 7 halves. Okay, um, so let's do this, this, this or case. So this is, this is one solution, and we should definitely go back and check this. So for this one, we have 16 minus 4x. Let's distribute this minus sign is equal to minus 4x plus 12. Now when we add, uh-oh, right? If we add... 4x to both sides, we get some cancellation, and we get the nonsensical comment, uh, the nonsensical statement that 16 equals 12. We write no, and this, so we only have one solution. There's only one solution. Okay, let's go back and put seven halves in there and check. Let's just check this. So move it down a little bit. This is checking. Checking. X equals 7 halves. We have the absolute value of 16 minus 4 times 7 halves. Is that equal to, and I like to put a question mark right there, 4 times 7 halves minus 12. And uh, we have uh, 4 times 7 is 28. With, if we have 28 halves, we really have 14. And we're taking... 14 away from 16, and is that equal to, and taking the absolute value, is that equal to, uh, here we have uh, four, uh, 4 times 7 is 28 halves again, so we have uh, 14 minus 12, well, this is definitely true, the absolute value of 2 is equal to, is equal to 2, so um, the answer is yes, so it checks. Now, let's talk about the uh, graphic representation of this problem. Okay, so I want to turn this into a graph problem, and I'm just going to use this, take this equation, and um, uh, manipulate it perfectly legally. Uh, if the absolute value of 16 minus 4x is equal to 4x minus 12, then it's true, whoops, and it's true, I should stick with yellow. It's true that the absolute value of 16 minus 4x 
minus 4x is equal to negative 12. How did, what did I do? All I did was subtract 4x. Um, I should probably make that more clear. Let's do that. Let's minus or subtract 4x from both sides. Okay, now this, this minus 4x is not going to go inside that absolute value. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Mr. Steiner, you're just making this problem more complicated. And you are slightly right, but mostly wrong. These 4x's will cancel. And what are we left with on the right-hand side? Don't answer, because I can't hear you. We're left with minus 12. Now I'm also going to add 12 to both sides. And this will be, I'll make it apparent why I'm doing this. What do we have on the right-hand side? We have a zero. And on the left-hand side, we have what you are going to argue is more complicated, but it's going to help me make my point. So over here, we have a function of x. And if I, well, remember the, the original um, uh, uh, question the instructions were to solve for x. Um, but if I solve this, uh, this for x, I, it would be doing the same thing. Um, you see I made it more complicated, but actually I, I didn't make it that complicated. I just made this uh, function of x equal to 0. When is the function of x? When is f of x equal to 0? The answer is when, here this is the question, the answer is when f of x crosses the which axis? Did you say x-axis? That's right. When it crosses the x-axis. So if I graphed this f of x right here, if I graphed this guy, and I saw where it crossed the x-axis, I could say that that function equals 0, which is exactly what we want to do. Well, look at my cool graphing program here. There's my function, the absolute value of 16 minus 4x minus 4x plus 12, which is the same function I have right here. I'm going to go back and forth a couple times, right? Now watch. When I plot it, it crosses only at one point right here. It crosses at 3 point, point six. Oh, I know. It's I can't get it. I can't get it exactly over that point. So really, that's 3.5. I don't know if you can see the numbers changing on your graphing calculator. You can get it. You can get it exact. But that's the. Um, this is the graphic representation of an absolute value problem. I hope that was helpful.